Hello, I mean, hi, kids. All right, uh, you should have watched that simulation and wrote down some observations. Um, my hope is your first observation you noticed was that the orbits are actually ellipses. And that's actually Kepler's first law. Now, remember, a circle is a special ellipse, okay? Um, an ellipse, and, and I should say that uh, an ellipse, um, well, the sun in an orbit is always going to be at one of the foci, the, the, the focus points of an ellipse. So imagine that you had a piece of string and you had two pencils, so you went like this and this, and then you put a piece of string around those two things and you drew a circle or an ellipse, well, that's going to be ellipse. And the sun is always going to be at one of those um, those focus points, okay? But orbits are ellipses. That's, that's number one, it's an ellipse, okay? That should be super easy to understand. It's an ellipse, okay? Um, Kepler's second law... is you should have noticed this, that as the planet gets closer to the sun, okay, um, it speeds up. As it moves away from the sun, it slows down. So now when I say planet, it really is whatever is orbiting this thing. It doesn't have to be a planet. It could be a comet. It could be a satellite, whatever. So um, so when I, I'll put planet in quotes because it really could just mean anything. As the planet moves towards the sun, and I'm going to say sun in quotes too, because it doesn't have to be the sun, it's really whatever it's orbiting around. You know, if you have things orbiting the earth, they will all orbit in ellipses. And again, remember, a circle is a special ellipse, okay? If they're orbiting the earth, as that satellite moves towards the earth it's going to speed up as it moves away it's going to slow down so as the planet moves towards the sun it speeds up uh, as it moves away it slows down now this is not exactly how kepler explained it um i'll show you what he said in just a minute but let's first make sure that this makes sense why this happens, okay? So let's let's draw the sun, and then we're going to draw a, I don't know, we'll say that's a comet going around the sun, okay? Um, and let's just pick a point. Let's say right here, okay? Right there, that comet is moving that direction, okay? Tangent to the circle, and right there, the only force acting on that comet is pointing that way towards the sun, the force of gravity. Okay. Well, if you take a look here, if I break that force of gravity into its components, why? Because you can see that it's not parallel or perpendicular to this. So let's break it into its components. So there's my perpendicular component, and there is my parallel component. Well, look. Hey, look, I have a net force pointing this way. Well, if my net force is pointing this way and my it's moving that way, what is it going to do? Oh yeah, moving this way, accelerating that way, that's going to cause it to speed up. Hence, if it's moving towards the sun, it's going to speed up. Well, what about this other component? What is that going to cause it to do? Oh yeah, that's going to cause it to change direction, moving this way and that's supposed to be at a right angle. Well, that's kind of lousy. And accelerating that way, well, that's going to be causing it to change direction. If you pick a point, you know, down here where it's moving away, if I do the same thing, well, it's moving this way. My force of gravity is this way. Now, my force of gravity over here would be smaller because it's farther away. It is, well, I guess it's about the same distance away. But if it was farther away, it'd be smaller. But if I break that into its components, do you see, hey, this and this, are it's accelerating that way, 
it's moving this way, that's going to cause it to slow down. And then this component would cause it to change direction. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, Kepler didn't word it like this. This is what Kepler said. Uh, planets sweep out equal areas in equal time. So let's talk about what he's actually saying or what he actually observed with this. So if I have my orbit again, okay, here's my sun. Well, let's say I take the planet was right here. And after 60 days, the planet is right there. Okay. Well, if I look at this area, any other place where if I take 60 days, that area is going to be the same. Well, here, it's going to be speeding up. So it's going to have traveled a little bit farther. So it's going to look something like this. Well, this area is going to equal this area. If I was to do it over here, it looks something like this or from there to there would be 60 days, all of these areas have to be the same. The planet will sweep out equal areas in equal amount of time. Okay, so Kepler's first law, Kepler's second law. All right, we'll talk more about Kepler's third law in just a minute, because my guess is you probably, well, at least I hope you found something like this. Some of the other observations you saw was that as R gets bigger, the period gets bigger. Hopefully you saw that. That as the planet is farther away, it takes longer to go around. And this is true with our solar system. Uh, Mercury has a year on Mercury is about 90 Earth days. I think it's 88 Earth days. Uh, obviously on the Earth, it's 365 days. And then if you were like in Saturn, which is way further out, a year on Saturn, it takes about 30 Earth years to go around. So it's obviously much, much longer. So Kepler's third law is going to relate to this. So you're going to do some stuff, and then uh, we'll talk about that. All right. Bye, kids!